John Charles, Ian Rush, Ryan Giggs. There have been several extraordinary Welsh players, but absolutely nobody would dare denying Gareth Bale of the title of the best player in Wales history. He had his ups and downs throughout a career that started off early and lasted 17 years. He suffered many injuries that robbed him of his devilish pace, that made him famous, and even saw his love for the sport questioned as many times as he decided matches. A hobby that Bell fell in love with created the not-so-creative nickname of Golfer, which stuck around and was actually the source of many criticisms, however, just a quick glance at his conquest is enough to be sure that football always came first in his life. With a total of 225 goals scored and 22 trophies under his name, including 5 Champions League wins, there are no doubts that only very few players in history achieved more than Bale. Bale was born in 1989 in a family where football was very present. His uncle, Chris Pike, played for Cardiff City and it didn't take long for Bale to follow his footsteps. Despite his natural predisposition to beat athletic records, young Bale shows his passion and decided to play football and his first club was Cardiff Civil Service. It was on this small club that he caught Southampton's attention. He was only 16 when he was called up by George Burley to be in the starting 11 on a 2-0 win over Millwall in the Championship. He was the latest call up by one of the best youth academies in the UK and continued to show his talent by scoring his first goal as a professional player next season against Derby County with a great free kick. If you think I'm talking about one of the first offensive moments of a promising young winger, then you're wrong. The first years in Bale's career were actually spent under the role of one of the most promising left-backs in the world. It didn't take long to gain the set-piece specialist moniker and by December of 2006, he was named the best young Welsh player of the year by BBC, while by the end of the season, he was named the best young player of the championship. Everything pointed him to be one of the best football players in the world very, very soon. That year, the Saints fell promotion to the Premier League following the playoff semi-finals but the young kid from Cardiff, only 17 years old at the time, managed to secure the jump to one of the biggest stages in the world. In 2007, Bale left Southampton for Tottenham, with the Spurs paying almost 15 million euros for him. Bell was just a teenager coming from English football second year, and there wasn't much trust in his defensive capabilities, so for the first time in his career, he advanced in the field, spending his playing time in his first season as both left-back and left midfielder in the 4-4-2 scheme that Spurs used at the time. Consequently, his first times in London were exemplary. Right in his second Premier League match against Fulham, Bale scored his first goal for Tottenham, while in the next game, he showed himself to the world with a fantastic free-kick goal against Arsenal in his first North London derby. Everything was going well to young Bale, until his first injury came knocking on his door. The season had ended for him on the 2nd of December and he only returned 9 months later. He was more discreet in the following season, almost always playing as a left back. While in 2009-2010, things didn't start well as he was submitted to surgery just when the season was starting. However, after Asue Kuto suffered an injury of his own, Bale earned his back his place in the Spurs starting 11 and never lost it again. He finished that season in great form, scoring important triumphs over Chelsea and Arsenal. Prime Bale was just getting started. In 2010-2011, Bale was only deployed as a left-back in rare occasions. He had become a winger as he developed a lot of strength and explosion to complement the speed that always characterized his playing style. In addition to that, his passing accuracy and improved finishing forced his coach to deploy him in more attacking roles. He started that season in great form, helping Spurs qualify for the Champions League, beating young boys in the playoffs and continued playing terrific football in the group stage. His big moment came when Spurs played in Giuseppe Meazza an away trip to the then current European champions Inter. Tottenham lost that game 4-3, having spent 82 minutes with 10 players on the field. However, Gareth Bale made Maicon, one of the best right backs in the world at the time, look like an amateur and scored an hat-trick. If there were any doubters, Bale shut their mouths that evening. A total of 11 goals and 10 assists earned them a place in UEFA's team of the year. That was a great feat, but he managed to surpass that next season with 12 goals and 14 assists. And by the end of the 2012-2013 campaign, as a 23-year-old, he was considered a world-class player. Many even consider him the successor to Cristiano Ronaldo. He was no longer a winger and everyone knew it, so he has to change his kit number from 3 to 11. With that kit, he scored a whopping 26 goals, 21 of them in the Premier League, where he was considered player of the year. Tottenham had a diamond in their hands, who had potential to be the club's best player of all time. Sadly, they missed the qualification to the Champions League by one point, so Bale's place at Tottenham was at stake. Spurs needed money, and now, the only way to get it seemed obvious. 
without a single title in North London, except the League Cup win when he was injured, Bale was looking for glory. And when that's your goal, what club better than Real Madrid to achieve it? The Welsh star was a missing piece in a new era of superstars at Real Madrid and his prize was absolutely extraordinary, as his move to the Spanish capital was the first transfer in history to surpass the 100 million euros mark. He was converted into a right winger in order to use his magic left foot to cut inside and create even more danger and alongside Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema form one of the best and most feared attacking trios of all time, the BBC. He fit in perfectly and his first season as a merengue was the best in his career, having scored 22 goals and assisted 17 times. He also won the Champions League and the Copa del Rey, scoring both finals. And what a goal that was in the Copa del Rey final. There were injuries, something that would get worse in the following years, but that season was filled with amazing free kick goals, hat tricks and titles exactly what he was looking for. He began his second season at Real Madrid, playing stupendously well, winning the UEFA Super Cup in his hometown and just a few months later the club World Cup, once again scoring in the final. In January of 2015, he received his first criticisms from the Merengues after a couple of plays where he didn't assist Cristiano Ronaldo and instead looked to score himself but failed multiple times. However, his coach Carlo Ancelotti always had his back and Bale eventually bounced back, continuing to boast impressive numbers despite Real Madrid being unable to win the league. Los Blancos needed a change to achieve the highest level once again, so Florentino Perez was bold and appointed Zinedine Zidane, who at the time had only coached Real Madrid's B team. Fortunately, that turned out to be one of the greatest decisions by Real Madrid, as Bale and his teammates improved a lot and finished the season winning the Champions League, beating their city rivals Atletico Madrid. The triumph kickstarted an unforgettable streak of three Champions League wins in a row, four in five years, although Bale didn't contribute much to the 2016-2017 conquest. He had spent the majority of that season on the sidelines due to multiple injuries. By the following year, the Welshman was in better physical shape and finished the season with 21 goals including two goals, one of them an absolute banger in the Champions League final against Liverpool. Sadly, that game marked one of the last times we would see a world-class performance by Bale. Slowly but surely, the great numbers that he boasted in the past started to dip just like his fitness levels, while his critics became louder and louder in time until he left on a loan to Tottenham. His loan to his beloved Spurs actually went well as he scored 16 goals, play on the right wing along Son and Kane. However, when it was time to return to Madrid, he couldn't maintain that level. The injuries returned and he played way less than he ever did in his career. That season, he played less than 300 minutes and finished the season scoring just a single goal. He didn't play in his fifth Champions League win and that was the last time he was seen with the iconic white shirt. Wales, golf, Madrid, in that order. That iconic phrase will always be associated to Gareth Bale's legacy. It was uttered by Pedrag Mijatovic, a former Real Madrid player, in an interview to Spanish media. And it just stuck. Especially because from a supportive perspective, it really seemed to define Bale's priorities. That phrase, no matter how true or untrue it might be, is also a great conclusion to the story of his career. But in order for it to make sense, let's start from the end. Madrid came as his last priority because his dedication to Real Madrid seemed to have deteriorated throughout the years. He was also heavily criticized due to the fact that he never learned how to speak Spanish. But if he played consistently well, the fans would probably forgive him, which unfortunately didn't happen in his last years at the club. Those final years were marked by a lack of effort in training, low quality performances and long periods on the sidelines that eventually started to become associated with his favorite hobby. And that leads us to the second point, golf. At the time, Bale was already nicknamed the golfer by his teammates. He didn't mind the nickname and also didn't hide his love and obsession with the sport, permanently associating himself with it. And to conclude, Wales. His country was always considered by many his biggest priority. No matter how bad he was playing at club level, he always gave his all when wearing his country colors. He retired from the national team at the same time he retired from football, as the most capped player and top goal scorer in Wales history, with 111 matches and 41 goals. Bale played his first match for Wales when he was only 16, which at the time was a record, and it didn't take long to become the youngest goal scorer as well. Ten years later, he achieved what his childhood heroes could only dream of. He took Wales to the Euros and was one of the best players in a historic tournament for his country where he carried his team all the way to the semi-finals. He missed the 2018 World Cup, but he redeemed himself and helped Wales qualify for the Euro Championship in 2020 
or 2021, wherever you want to call it, where they advanced past the group stage. His first World Cup presence only came in 2022 in Qatar. He scored Wales' only goal in the competition, which wasn't enough to qualify to the run of 16. The last match on the competition, against England, turned out to be Bale's last game as a professional football player. The memory will live on for millions of Welsh people who saw a young boy from Cardiff carry the nation to the highest level in world football, who saw a trailblazing player inspire an entire generation, and most importantly, someone who stayed true to himself, to his passions and convictions no matter how hard he was criticized. I really hope you enjoyed this video, leave in the comments which legend should I make a video about. Thank you for sticking around until the end, if you liked this video, maybe you will enjoy this one too. I'll see you on the next one.